There are some smart people out there. Smarts are not always used for good, and if you can throw your scruples to the side for a minute, it can be lucrative. But what do criminals do with their ill-gotten gains once they get them? Spending it without getting caught can be so tricky. They need to hide the source of their income to prevent the law from finding them out. Since they often roll with some shady characters, keeping the cash out of others' hands is also a concern. They need to find a way to use the money and realize their gains while staying under the radar and not getting caught by regulators and law enforcement. Anti-money laundering measures have come a long way since the first efforts during Prohibition in the U.S. and then the inception of the Financial Action Task Force, or the FATF, in the 1980s. This reminds me of a case. Rare. Fin Crime Investigator Jennifer here. What can I help you find? I need your help. Do I know you? Your voice sounds oddly familiar. I need to know if I've made a mistake. Okay, you're gonna have to tell me the whole story. Let's just say that when I started out, I was laundering a couple hundred bucks a day from my business, funds that no one needed to know where they came from. I definitely didn't want law enforcement catching on. I had a lifestyle to maintain, so I had to keep the money coming in. But how exactly did you do it? You didn't get caught? When I started, it all just happened so fast, and I wasn't prepared. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, for the first bit, my one-bedroom apartment doubled as a storage shed for the bags of cash. One day when the pizza guy came, though, I opened the door, and the wind from opening it sucked the bills out from under the closet. It just wow. became too risky. I decided I had to get the stuff into the bank faster. I had no back garden with space to bury the bags of cash like I had seen on TV. I walked into the bank desperate, with cash in my hand, and started the classic, Hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm seemingly very sweet and I'll be a great client. Can you just put this big bag of cash from my sweet old grandma in the bank for me just this one time? Really? I used social engineering to the max. That part is really useful at getting people to push the rules and to look the other way for me. But when the bank saw me coming in a bit too often, they started recognizing me and it raised suspicion. So I moved on to using Smurfs to launder the funds. I learned quickly to diversify, to invest in various business models. I just didn't always choose the right one. I started a cash-based business to commingle the funds and partnered up with some fine folks who could change my dollars for other currencies. Okay. Basically, I'd sell them something or they'd invoice for goods that didn't really exist. They'd take my payment to an account in another country and hold it in a different currency. I tried something a bit different once abroad too. I packed some folks in a car, packed them with bars of gold to drive across the border. See, gold is much more compact than bulky paper, polymer, or linen currency. So off they went in the car, crossing borders with the gold on them. I also bought cell phone minutes in Africa using M-Pesa. That one I barely understood though, and I didn't have enough of a network on the ground there to use them well. Heck, I even got a Swiss bank account because it sounded trendy, but I didn't know what to do with it. Sure enough, I got caught. I mean, anybody can watch a movie and think that money laundering is easy. How exactly did you get caught? Well, I had two problems. The first was I agreed to do business with some folks I didn't fully trust. They were sloppy. They drew attention to the car crossing the border with the gold, and they were found out. See, it gets riskier the more people you have in on your secret. I took a pretty big hit on that one. So I've learned wow. to always split any shipments so that there's less potential for a big loss. I mean, that's smart. I don't trust people easily anymore either. And I've had to set the record straight on the street as to how I deal with those who cross me. The second problem I had, well, it turns out all of my charm walking into the bank branch, bribing them with my fake love, it was wasted. They were submitting reports to the regulator about my behavior and I got too brazen. I got reported without me even knowing it. I mean, financial institutions around the world have undertaken anti-money laundering and anti-terrorist financing regulations, and they take them seriously. In Canada, 
the UK, the US, Australia, and globally, regulatory scrutiny is placed on transactions, but it's not just about a single threshold. In other words, it's not just because your grandma appeared to have a lot of money to give you. It's about patterns and whether they line up with your expected behavior as a customer. The red flagging systems used by financial institutions or banks are more complicated than just did you deposit more than $10,000 in one day. They frequently rely on automated transaction monitoring tools that look for financial pattern spikes. They combine thresholds across time periods, across products, and in some cases across institutions. And they rely on investigators to sniff out what seems like normal behavior for you, your business, and your account. And in the case of the tellers at the branch you visited, they might have literally smelled the bag of cash that you brought in. The bank has no desire to be associated with proceeds of crime, like say, drug trafficking. In fact, you're lucky you didn't get brought up on other charges, to be honest. I suppose you were smart to set up a cash-based business though, to commingle the funds. But investigators and regulators are on to that today too. Right, but I know what they look for. They look at high values, high volumes, they look for lots of EMTs used to layer funds. But I did my time, I learned, I rebranded my business, and I started laundering $5,000 a day. I did use EMTs for the first bit. I made sure the account I created at the bank could accept EMTs, drafts, cashier's checks, and made sure that any addresses sending the funds to me made sense and that they had a backstory. Banks look to see notes in the EMT memo field, and they often research the sending email of the funds to see who you do business with. Drafts and cashier's checks are a known source of money laundering as well, because they don't show the name of the sender, only the name of the issuing bank as the funds come from their general ledger. Banks work together to try and share information when large volumes of drafts are purchased. Financial institutions look closely at these vehicles when they're being requested and deposited as well. In an ideal world, sure. But I know that most financial institutions submit reports on suspicious transactions they see far too late. They're known for not being able to review the transactions as they're happening, and their systems can barely keep up with the regulatory requirements. Mm. In other words, even if they could identify all transactions related to my businesses, they're not able to identify them all as suspicious. I mean, maybe a few. I'm willing to play those odds, along with diversifying to get most of my profits across the border, obscure their source, and use the funds before the bank stops me. Hold on a second. Are you telling me you're not getting caught some portion of the time? This would slow down your business. I mean, I did get caught a few times, but I just rebranded again. A new business model is just a small price to pay in such a lucrative world. It's basically like the cost of overhead for me. I moved up to laundry almost $500,000 the last few days, so I'm always on the hunt for the right business to add to my portfolio. I can afford to get good people on side now too. I have a full security detail, great accountants who can open a perfect business or make use of a shelf business collecting dust. We have great programmers to write scripts to do my finances and trades. We look for unused identities that we can use so we'll search obituaries for unused social security numbers in the U.S. And children's social insurance numbers in Canada are great when paired with their unused and unmonitored credit. We also dabbled in the luxury car business for a while to place funds and transfer them overseas. We even tried to partner with some friends to buy a bank in Mexico, but that one hit the news, so... Come on! That would draw a huge amount of attention! The last one did, unfortunately. But I thought it could be managed, and I was getting antsy. I had so much money to move that it drew a lot of attention. Even a stock trade from me was affecting the markets. I needed a quick vehicle to hide the funds. I decided to focus on crypto and virtual assets. I started one of my businesses specifically to move funds to Bitcoin. I tried out a few other virtual currencies along the way too. Yeah, but law enforcement and regulators have begun to put stops in place with a focus on cryptocurrency exchanges. They ensure that on and off ramps to crypto from the fiat world embrace KYC regulations and help to deter money laundering and terrorist financing. 
It's true putting funds into the system at a Bitcoin ATM might go undetected as KYC at these machines can be harder to enforce and whether or not they're regulated varies by country. But based on how much you're laundering, you'd also have a fiat cash carrying problem. With so much on hand, you'd risk being noticed and mugged on the way to the BTM. And there's a physical cash limit to how much you can stuff into the machine on any given day. The Bitcoin ATMs were great. As long as I had enough people I could trust on my team, we could get at least some of the cash into the system without getting much attention. And peer to peer on the dark web, I mean, I thought it was going really well, but this is where I'm concerned I might have made a mistake. Peer-to-peer -peer networks on the dark web do offer incredible secrecy when you're trying to buy or trade virtual assets. We're figuring it out though. Virtual currency service providers are becoming regulated. Reporting to the regulator is happening on transactions just like yours. And law enforcement is on the dark web. They're peeling back the layers of that onion and they're watching. but I guess you already found that out too. Maybe just a bit too late. Please, hands up! So if you had to, how would you launder funds? What do you think is the easiest way to do it today, undetected? Or do you think you have the key to finding the launderer? Tell me in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe so you can check out my next case with me. Take care.